Good morning. I welcome you to Algiers United Methodist Church this morning. It's so good to have those that are here and those that are watching um, Facebook Live and um, those that watch us later on. So we welcome you today. And we welcome Reverend Hooten, who is visiting with us today and filling in for Reverend Colleen, who has taken a, um, a time off to be at home. And we thank him so much for giving himself to us and doing a bell chase and our uh, services today. Oh, and his wife is also here, Reverend Hooten also. So we welcome both of them today and are so pleased to have them with us. Um, under announcements, we have, um, we do have the flowers are here this morning from the Neals and uh, wishes for a brighter new year. And um, I'm sure that's a, a prayer and a wish from all of us that um, as we close out this 2020, that we'll have some fun and, and exciting and good news and things exciting to happen to us in 2021. Um, I don't know of any other announcements except um, there will be Sunday School Zoom next week. We're waiting for a new um, series to come in. Um, if I don't get it in time for next week, then we will be doing something, a surprise. But we do have services on Zoom at 10 o'clock on Sundays. And um, I'm thinking if there's anything else at the end of this year, except we, we still have Sunday school. Christine is here. If anybody, we've started Sunday school uh, for the children also, um, live here at church. And um, same thing for the adults. We have class here and on Zoom. We do it all together at the same time. We will have a council meeting coming up, and I think it is the third week. It's not, yeah, there'll be an announcement coming up soon. It's a Tuesday night, but it's not the second week. We've moved it back, I think, so it's like the 19th or something. But we have time to get that. Just know that you're going to have a council meeting, and that means all new council people that are on for the 2021 year, we will start. So. Um, we look forward to that and we'll let you know about that. So um, at this time, we will um, prepare for worship and let's center ourselves for worship at this time. everyone. If you will join me for the call to worship, which is printed in your bulletin, we will read it in unison. Please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of the God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, the man. 
Well, good morning. Good morning. Morning. Okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, our children's moments, I think I'm speaking to the children of God, which is all of y'all. Well, on the camera, too. On the camera, too. There you go. Um, so, um, Ordinarily, I think from talking to Pastor Colleen, the kids remain in their seats anyway. But this morning, I'm asking everybody to just kind of focus your attention on the doors of the church or just think about the doors of the church. Um, today is the last Sunday before New Year's. You, you don't have to, to actually look at them. I'm just, think, just think about the doors of the church. Uh, it's the last Sunday before New Year's, so the next time we gather here, it'll be a new year. Um, what is so special about New Year's? The weather is going to be pretty much the same. Um, we're physically pretty much the same. Mainly, uh, we turn a page on the calendar, and instead of it being 2020, uh, it'll be 2021. Thank God. Um, I read where somebody said that it's uh, on January the 1st at 12.01 a.m. is going to be the first time you can really and truly say that it's 2020 hindsight. Uh, it'll be behind us. But it's a new year, new opportunities, new chances to grow and interact with people. Um, imagine New Year's being like a door. It's a doorway to new, uh, new chances. Uh, we just celebrated Christmas the other day. We filled our hearts, had our hearts filled with hope and peace and love and joy. Christ is born. The light of the world is here. And now it's time for a new year for us to go out into the world and carry all of that peace and joy and love and mercy with us into the world. So imagine, if you would, a banner above the door of the church going out into the world saying that peace and hope and love and joy. Imagine, if you would, a banner at the door of your home. And as you go out every day, there's a banner above the door that says peace and hope and love and joy, reminding all of us that those are the things that we need to share with the people that we encounter, with our friends, our family, our neighbors, schoolmates, workmates, the folks that we encounter day by day. Uh, a new year, a new opportunity. We have in Christ new life new opportunity to carry those blessings with us. Um, and I would invite you, those of you who are here, to pray with me a kind of an echo prayer. I'll say a phrase, and if you would, repeat it. Dear Lord, thank you for the blessings of Christmas. Help me to share your blessings with everyone as I go through these doors into the world, and into a new year. Amen. It's at this time that we usually do our offering, and it's because of the what we're doing now, we do not actually pass the plate, but uh, we have our offering time um, if you're here, it's up here on the altar and by the back, by the front doors. Um, and then if you're at home and watching, you can either mail your offering to 637 Opelousas Avenue, New Orleans, 70114, or you can uh, pay online with Anadot. You can text 22525, no, Algiers UMC, Algiers UMC. Two. Two, two, two. Five two five. If if you just if if you get lost like me, you just 
You just look, you just go to Algiers UMC, and there's always a link that you can click on that sends you right there. So that's the simplest way, it takes less brain power to figure it out. So um, that works. And so we thank you for those, this time and um, the offerings. Uh, let's pray. God, we give you thanks for your love for us, for all your blessings upon us, and we share a portion of those gifts with you with your church, with your community this day. We ask your blessings upon all of the gifts that we receive this day, either in person or online, and ask for your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. This is our, our prayer time. I, I have a few prayers. I don't have um, the insert with uh, any uh, prayers, but I do have come, some that we want to mention. Uh, we want to remember Mike Kitzman. He's now home with Sue. Um, they both need our prayers. I know um, he's trying to start um, doing some um, therapy and getting around and moving more. And we probably have to send lots of prayers to Sue as being the caregiver. Um, and so we pray that that goes um, a long way and that he does start making improvements at home. Patty expressed um, two Thanksgivings this morning. One, the baby Ocean is now at home. Um, Matthew and David were able to leave um, Minnesota and they're back home in Raleigh, North Carolina. And she's looking forward, she's going to get to visit in uh, January. They're uh, day, um, coming here for a little bit, but she'll be going to visit them at, in North Carolina in January. And Katie and Charlie were married. They've had their honeymoon, and they're headed back to um, U Salt Lake City um, right now. So they're on their way. But she said blessings for all of those things. We want to remember Elaine's sister, um, Mary, and um, Jack's brother, Gary, who fell and has a couple of broken ribs. Um, we want to remember him. I want to remember Rooney and Jeff as in their entourage today. They're going off with my grandchildren on a camping expedition. So uh, keep them all in your prayers, Rooney and Jeff and the kids, um, and hopefully they all <laughs> return. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's excellent and a great um, way to start this year or end out this year. So uh, we will say a prayer for them. Um, do I have any other special prayers or in, um, celebrations that we have to say today? Rooney, anything? No one has, has responded because you have responded to, to some of them. Again, remember prayers that have been put up um, in the past, and then also a second prayer that we have not. And for um, Jeff's mother, Jeanette, um, and Jack. Yes. Deanna Boaz. So we remember all those in our prayers today. Proceed. Carmadale, the Carmadale family. So we remember them. Um, so let's bring all of these um, to God's light and remember them in our hearts and let us bring our prayers to the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, we know that you are there. We know that you are always listening. Let us remember that you were there. Let us remember to look to you and to hang on to you when we need your extra encouragement. Let your healing hands surround those that need it and the families as they seek better health. Be with all those that are doing new experiences and just encourage those to look to the light and to look to your love and let it envelop us. Be with everyone this week as we go forward and as we end this year, that we can go into the new year with new hope and new faith and renewed light that we share with everyone in the world. We be with all those people and we be with you as we remember the words that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In his time. first scripture this morning is from Galatians chapter 4, starting at verse 4. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if, it, and if a child, then also an heir through God. This morning's gospel lesson comes from Luke chapter 2, starting at verse 20, which is where we left off on Christmas Eve. Verse 21, actually. <clears throat> After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel, before he was conceived in the womb. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple and when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arm and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, <clears throat> and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher, she was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that, at the moment that she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem, 
When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their home of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. And let us pray. God, we thank you this day as we thank you on all days for your love for us, for your blessings upon us. But this day especially, the third day of the season of Christmas, we give thanks for a son, a son who has been born to us, a son to, a son to show us the way. We thank you for the scriptures, for all your gifts to us. Help us to love you, to share your gifts to hear your word and to be strengthened to do your word in our daily lives through Christ our Lord amen just a few more short verses of scriptures from Ecclesiastes chapter 3 I think most of this will sound familiar for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. I know that whatever God does endures forever. Nothing can be added to it nor anything taken from it. God has done this so that all should stand in awe before him. That which is already has been. That which is to be already is. And God seeks out what has gone by. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. On Thursday evening uh, it was a time for worship, it was a time for celebration. Christmas Eve is a time when we gather together to hear the Christmas story, to sing Christmas carols, to share in Holy Communion, to observe the moment by candlelight. But that was Christmas Eve, a time of anticipation, a time of expectation. Today is Sunday, in particular, the first Sunday after Christmas, a time when things begin to return to normal, whatever normal might mean in these day and times. And sure, we're still singing some Christmas carols, and we're still lighting candles, and sure, the decorations are still beautiful, but nothing beats the expectancy, the excitement, the anticipation that comes before Christmas. But the fact is, for most of us, few things match the letdown that comes after Christmas. Now is the season of crumpled wrapping paper. Now is the season of overstuffed trash cans and perhaps that inevitable visit from Aunt Mary or Uncle Joe or whoever it is in your family. For one more Sunday, we may be singing carols about the advent of the Master at Christmas, but we're beginning to think about the advent of those Master card bills that will soon be coming in the mail. This morning's Gospel lesson picks up where we left off on Christmas Eve. It is the Gospel. In the Gospel, it's eight days later in verse 21. On the eighth day, it is time for Jesus as a Jewish male to be circumcised in verse 22 it is time for Mary's purification and the appropriate offering at the temple is two turtle doves where have we heard of two turtle doves before in point of fact the two turtle doves is the offering of a poor person reminding us that Jesus was born into poverty earlier in Luke chapter 2 as we heard on Christmas Eve it had been a time for a census and then it was the time for Mary to give birth. In many ways, it's all about time. Some of you, um, not all of you, but some of you are old enough to remember a sitcom from the mid-60s called It's About Time. That particular sitcom was about two, two astronauts who got caught in some sort of time warp, and when they came back to Earth, it was... Um, prehistoric times 
And the theme song for that show began with these words, it's about time, it's about space, it's about strange people in the strangest place. Aren't we strange people in a strange place? In the gospel, we journey back 2,000 years to places like Nazareth and Bethlehem and Jerusalem. In Ecclesiastes, we journey another 1,000 years further back. But the words then are just as true now. For everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. Today is the last Sunday of 2020. When you gather again, again next Sunday, it will be the first Sunday of 2021. It is about time. It is about new beginnings. And today, rather than focusing exclusively on the gospel lesson, which has lots to tell us, I want to focus more on the epistle lesson, and in particular, one verse. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman. Here we have a thought that kind of bridges Christmas over to the new year. Paul speaks about the birth of Christ Jesus in the fullness of time. What do we know about the fullness of time? It's kind of a peculiar phrase, isn't it? Uh, we know about other kinds of satisfying fullness. We know about the fullness of a Christmas cup or a Christmas dinner plate. We know about the fullness of a room or a crowded street, or at least we did at one time. We know about the fullness of Tiger Stadium on a Saturday night, once upon a time. Uh, but the fullness of time or the fullness of a day, what on earth does that mean? We're not talking about over busy days. We're not talking about packing every moment with hyperactivity. It's more like an overflowing glass. My cup overflows. <clears throat> Ezra Pound suggested that our times are fully enough to make us feel satisfied and replete. One of his poems goes this way, all the days are not full enough and the nights are not full enough and life slips by like a field mouse not shaking the grass. Now there's a poignant truth. Life slips by like a field mouse not shaking the grass. This new year will offer us more than 8,700 hours, over a half a million minutes, more than 31 million seconds. But will any of it have the quality of fullness about it? Which leads me to ask, what is time? You know, it's one of those things that God created along with the universe, but for most of us, it remains kind of a mystery. Is it the fourth dimension? St. Augustine, who lived in the 300s or 400s or something like that, once wrote, what then is time? If no one asks me, I think I know, but if I wish to explain it to another, I have no idea. And if trying to define time is hard enough for him and us, how do we define the fullness of time that Paul talks about? Is it quality time? Is it frenetically busy time? Is it overflowing time? Is it ripe time? All the days are not full enough, and the nights are not full enough, and life slips by like a field mouse not shaking the grass. <clears throat> Consider some different ideas on time. Uh, when I was in college a long, long time ago in a land far, far away, uh, I took a class that was simply entitled An Introduction to Philosophy. Not my favorite subject. Uh, but some of the Greek philosophers uh, regarded this life in time kind of like a shadow land. It's only a dim reflection of the real for some of those philosophers. For them, only the eternal world is real. What we have here is an illusion. Uh, heaven and earth are incompatible somehow. If we accept this view, then it becomes impossible 
that the fullness of time, that in the fullness of time, the divine could become incarnate, the son born of a woman. What's more, no happening in time could ever carry the description of fullness. Um, or is our time uh, more like a cycle that repeats itself over and over again, kind of like what we heard in Ecclesiastes. What is happening now has happened before. What will happen in the future has happened before because God makes the same things happen over and over again. There is nothing new under the sun. <clears throat> if that's true, then fullness is not possible within time no matter whatever kind of God becomes incarnate. The only fullness comes when something happens to break the cycle of time and free us from it. What about clock time or calendar time? In Greek, the word is chronos, you know, like a chronometer or chronology. This view of time has dominated Western thought for the last several centuries. Time is measured out in little bits. Uh, we even have the cliche phrase, at this point in time, um, it kind of passes like the little, if you have a quartz watch, the, how the clock goes click, click, click as the seconds pass. Um, when I spoke a few minutes ago about how many hours there are in the coming year and how many minutes there are in the coming year and how many seconds there are in the coming year, it's that kind of view of time. Is it quality time that we're talking about? That's a phrase that seems to get bannered about a lot in recent years. Um, Ezra Pound hints at that in the poem that I've shared with you. All the days are not full enough, and the nights are not full enough, and light Life slips by like a field mouse, not shaking the grass. The Bible declares something wonderfully better is available. In the fullness of time, God sent his son, born of a woman. In the Bible, time is a gift from God, lovingly created, and it is filled with purpose and with destiny. Time is an opportunity. It is an opportunity that offers greater fullness. And when the time was ripe, God fulfilled the possibility by sending his son born of a woman. The birth of Jesus ushers in the fullness of time. In Greek, the word is pleroma, not a word you hear in English very often, pleroma. Um, the word carries the meaning of ripeness or utter satisfaction or overflowingness or completeness. It can be like those water jars that are filled to overflowing or full sails that have wind spilling out of them or a cup full of wine or people overflowing with the spirit. Time provides the opportunity for this fullness and <clears throat> such fullness takes possession of time in Christ Jesus and through him that fullness becomes available to us. This quality time is not measured by excessive eating or excessive drinking or partying or attending entertainment extravaganzas or tourism or sleeping around. It's not measured by 100 channels on your TV, and you know how much of a waste of time that can sometimes be. And it's certainly not measured by living to the overripe age of 150 or thereabouts. Uh, we know what happens to overripe fruit. Quality time is living in God's love through Christ Jesus, our Savior. It is this pleroma, this fullness of time. Uh, try, try a simple comparison. Compare, if you will, the 30 or so years of Jesus' earthly life with the 90 or 100 years of some of our best-known business tycoons. Is there any comparison of fullness? Or try comparing the time of our late Mother Teresa with a Warren Buffett or a Rupert Murdoch or a Bill Gates. There's really not much comparison between them. As we prepare to enter 2021 with its 31 million seconds or thereabouts of clock time, will we be about God's quality time or society's 
pathetic diversions. <clears throat> Loving fullness or frenetic frustration. It will all be inadequate without Christ in the pleroma of his grace in which we choose to live and move and have our being. <clears throat> so this morning, um, <clears throat> I know y'all have not been using your hymnals and they've been mostly sitting there for many weeks, so they should be pretty germ-free. Uh, I would invite you to turn to page 607, <clears throat> where you will find the Wesley Covenant Prayer. Um, John Wesley, um, in the early days of the Methodist Church, um, introduced the covenant service. And in his introduction to the covenant service, he says that from time to time, we renew our covenant with God. Um, it was usually done on watch night or New Year's Eve. Um, we're pretty close to that. And it seemed to be the right time for us to share in this service, um, the prayer at least, uh, it seems somehow fitting. What better way to prepare for a new year by renewing our covenant with God? For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. Page 607. You got it? You would pray with me. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee, or laid aside for thee. Exalted for thee, or brought low by thee. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine, and I am thine, so be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Thank you.
final benediction. I have two things I forgot to announce before. And our prayers, let's remember Peggy, she was downstairs, she slipped in the kitchen. I think she's home with an ice pack. I think everything's okay, but we just want to remember her in our prayers that everything turns out all right. And also a big thank you to Reverend Hooten and his wife, Reverend Hooten, for coming and joining us today and helping us to end out this year and begin anew. Well, and thank you for letting me share with you all this day. Um, as we go forth this day, I would remind you of the words that I shared during the children's sermon. Imagine, if you will, a banner among the, above the door as you leave uh, to remind us to share God's love and joy and hope and peace and mercy with the folks that we encounter day by day. And now may you go forth in that love and joy and peace and hope. Amen. Thank you.